Peter shot an arrow at the rabbit. It wouldn't last long, but it was enough for dinner. It was fatter than most he had seen, and he might be able to do something with it. He needed to find something to eat. If he could kill it, then maybe the last two days wouldn't have been a total waste. The shot went wide, though, and the rabbit ran away. He swore at the animal. He hadn't eaten all that well since he went hunting. He wasn't exactly good at the whole hunter-gatherer thing. The only reason he did it was because he was even worse at farming, and he didn't have much choice if he wanted to eat. He had been an accountant before everything fell apart. He had lived in the city, in a nice apartment with a nice view. He had high-speed internet, electricity, plumbing, and all the food he could ever eat. He had looked down on farmers and the rednecks who went hunting and fishing and making moonshine. He viewed them as backwater idiots, with more fingers and IQ points. Now that he was living out in the woods, though, he would have given anything for even one of those rednecks to teach him how to survive. All he had managed to learn was from trial and error, and it had not gone well. It was better than living in the city. He had managed to escape that hellhole right before the military showed up. It had been rough in the country, but he had heard enough news from the city to thank his lucky stars that he was living in the woods. He had heard stories about starvation, disease, warlords, murder, riots in the streets, and worse. He figured anything was better than that. Still, it wasn't like life was a cakewalk. It was getting colder, and he needed warmer clothes before winter hit. He barely knew how to sew, and he had no clue how to make fabric. It had taken him most of the summer to learn how to tan a hide. That was the reason he had gone hunting in the first place. He would have much rather been in his cabin where it was warm and dry, or at least mostly dry. But if he didn't get deer pelts soon, he might freeze in a couple of months. So he went hunting. He had been gone for three days, and he hadn't seen any signs of deer. He had barely had any luck at all, and he hadn't eaten all day. He had really hoped that rabbit would make a nice dinner for him, but he had a feeling that he would be going to bed hungry that night. He sighed at the animal's escape and retrieved his arrow. There was maybe an hour of daylight left, and he knew he needed to get a fire started. Fortunately for Peter, he had learned how to make a fire. It had taken him a couple of weeks, and it had been the most miserable two weeks of his life. After he made fire the first time, though, his luck started to improve, and he had gotten enough practice since then that it hadn't been an issue. He gathered the tinder and kindling and made a small teepee before gathering more sticks to add to the fire once it got going. He used his bow drill to make a spark. He managed to finish as it was getting dark. Once he had a fire going, he found a relatively soft spot to settle down for the night. He huddled close to the fire and watched as it burned. He had grown a deeper appreciation for more than just the rednecks. There were a lot of things that he had grown to appreciate since the world collapsed. He felt like he understood his ancestors a little better, too. He knew firsthand just how hard it was to survive before the Industrial Revolution, and he had a newfound respect for the men and women who lived and died to give him things like matches and lighters. He curled up next to the fire and let it burn down as he fell asleep. It was warm, and the heat felt nice against his skin. He ignored the rumbling in his stomach and tried to fall asleep. His mind wandered as he lay on the ground. He thought of his cabin. It wasn't the nicest cabin by far, but he had been proud when he made it. It had taken him a couple of weeks, but when it was finally done, he felt a deep satisfaction that he hadn't felt ever in his life. He felt hopeful, too, because he knew after he finished it that he could survive after all. His life had been hard since then, but it had marked the moment from when he had gone from desperately clinging on to survival to actually carving out a life for himself. Every small achievement or victory since then made him feel the same way. Every time he learned to tan a hide or smoke meat or make a bow and arrows, it was a reminder that he could face whatever the world threw at him and overcome it. He found purpose and satisfaction from that in a way that he never really had at his job. Still, he would have given just about everything to go back to the way things were before. He nestled in next to the fire and fell asleep. He dreamed of being back in his cabin, warming his hands by the fireplace. He had a stew cooking in one of the pots he made, and it was filled with all sorts of foods like carrots, potatoes, parsnips, celery, and rabbit. He dreamed that he was eating several helpings, but each time he took a bite it tasted like nothing, and each time he finished a bowl he felt just as hungry as before. After he emptied the pot, he woke up. It was still dark out, but Dawn had just begun to stretch her rosy fingers across the sky. The fire had gone cold, but Peter still felt warm, and there had been no dew on the ground. He sighed at that, and he knew he would need to make a shelter sooner rather than later. He needed to catch a deer, but if the rain came and he wasn't ready, then all he'd catch would be a cold. He took a long time getting up, letting his body wake up naturally. Once he had managed to get rid of the last vestiges of sleep, he got up and began to gather wood to make a shelter. He didn't want to get caught in the rain, three days from home, with no roof over his head. He set to work making a small lean-to shelter. Once he had made the rough shape of it, he began piling leaves on top, then more sticks, then leaves, then even more sticks until he was convinced that it would be warm and dry and that the leaves wouldn't blow away in a storm. He made sure, too, that the shelter was protected from water seeping in on the ground. He had made that mistake before, and it had been a miserable experience. Finally, he piled some leaves inside the shelter to make a mattress. 
He really hoped it wouldn't rain. If it rained hard enough, all the animals that were out and about would go into hiding, and then he would have an even harder time getting hides to make a new coat. Still, he was glad that he was prepared, and he had some place to go if worse came to worst. By the time he finished, it was mid-morning. It wasn't the best time to hunt, but he set out into the woods anyways, making note of where his shelter was in case he needed to find it again. He followed rabbit tracks for a ways before they disappeared. With a sigh, he began looking for a different animal. He saw where a deer had rubbed its antlers against a tree, and soon after he saw deer tracks and began to follow them. He tracked the deer for about half an hour before he saw it. It was a doe. She was maybe a hundred pounds, and she walked lazily through the forest, grazing on the underbrush. Peter wanted to shoot it, but there was no clean shot. He knew he would miss, and the deer would escape. He slowly worked his way over to the animal, trying to be as quiet as possible. When he was maybe ten yards from the animal, he snapped a twig. The deer's head jerked up, and she saw him. She began to run, and Peter chased it. She was fast, and soon she was gone, and Peter had lost her. He groaned in frustration and began looking for tracks. Peter kept tracking the animal all day. Occasionally, he would get close and try and sneak up on the animal, but every time he tried, the animal would spot him and run away. He became more frustrated as the day went on, and being hungry didn't help anything. One time, he actually got close enough to take a shot, but as soon as he drew back the bow, his stomach rumbled and the deer heard it. He took the shot, but it went wide and the deer ran away. He continued tracking the animal, though. It wasn't like he had much choice. He needed the hide to make a coat, and he could use the food, too. He could eat some of the food he had stored at home, but that was at least a two-day walk, even if he went home in a straight line. Besides, he wasn't looking forward to old provisions. He just needed one clear shot. He knew that if he could sneak up on the deer, that he could kill it. But the deer was too fast, and its hearing was too good. He finally gave up in the afternoon, when the deer heard him from twenty yards away and bolted. He wanted to keep tracking it. He wanted to kill it for leading him on a wild goose chase. He looked up at the sky, though, and he knew he needed to be heading back. He had been keeping an eye on the clouds and watching them as they slowly rolled in. It looked like rain, and he knew if he didn't get to shelter soon that he'd be caught out in the middle of it. The deer had led him in loops through the forest, and getting back to his shelter was actually easier than he had thought it would be. It only took him about an hour to get there. He was glad for that, too. He had only been in his shelter for five minutes when it started to rain. He sighed when he heard the first few droplets. He had hoped that the rain would hold off until the next day and that he could at least catch dinner. But the rain came down on him while there was still an hour of daylight left. It came slowly at first, just a droplet or two, but before long it was a torrential downpour, and it didn't let up through the night. He was glad he had taken the time to make the shelter at that point, even if his hunger was beginning to gnaw on him. He curled up inside the shelter and tried to go to sleep. He figured there wasn't much he could do in the rain, and it was better to sleep while he could. After about an hour, he drifted to sleep. He wasn't exactly tired, but the rain helped him to go to sleep. While he slept, he began to dream. He dreamed he was back home in his old apartment. There was food in the fridge, and he could walk around freely even while it rained. He was on his way to his parents' house for a dinner of some sort. He had a feeling they were celebrating some holiday, but he didn't know which one. All he knew was that his family would be there, and they would be eating a lot. He felt happy in his dream, and he wished he could be back then, when things were better and when life was easier. He would have stayed in that dream for a while, but the sound of lightning crashing overhead woke him. It was loud, and it was closer than he would have liked. The thunder was so deafening that it sounded like someone had set off a mortar a foot from his head. There was no time between when the lightning lit up the sky and when the thunder crashed around him. He huddled in his shelter, hoping that nothing fell on him in the middle of the night. The last thing he needed was to be crushed by a falling tree. He stayed like that through the night, trying to sleep through the storm. Occasionally he drifted to sleep, only to be woken up by the thunder. When the storm finally ended, he only had a couple hours until sunrise, and he ended up sleeping fitfully through the rest of the night. When the sun rose, he felt exhausted, and he wanted to just curl up in the shelter and sleep through the day. His bladder had different ideas, though, and after ignoring it for a long time, he finally got up and went to the bathroom. He was tired and groggy, and he stumbled out into the darkness to relieve himself. He was about to go back to bed when he finished using the bathroom, but he saw a deer. Not just any deer, but the same deer that he had been chasing all the previous day. He quickly and quietly got his bow and strung it. He knocked an arrow and aimed at the animal. It didn't seem to notice him, and he silently drew back the arrow. He released his string, and the arrow flew straight at the deer. It struck the animal right in the heart. The doe fell over, dying quickly. Peter could hardly believe his good luck. He began dressing the deer quickly, removing intestines and organs. When he finished with that, he dragged the deer over to his shelter and began building a fire. It took him a while to get the fire going because everything was so wet, but he was able to use some of his bedding to make a spark, and he was able to find small enough twigs that they would still catch even though they were wet. Within about 15 minutes, he had a fire going, and he was busy carving off part of the deer to roast. He thought about saving the animal until he got home, but he hadn't eaten in two days, and he was hungry. When the deer meat was done cooking, he began to tear into it ravenously. 
It tasted delicious, and he savored every bite of it. He had went ahead and started roasting another portion of meat while he was eating the first. Finally, he had had his fill, and between the bits he had eaten and the organs he had removed, the deer was much lighter, and he could carry it without effort. He tied up its feet and ran a stick between its legs along its belly. Then, he slung it over his shoulder and began walking home. It took him a couple of days to get back, and the deer was much lighter by then. He had been smoking provisions throughout the night, and roasting enough of it to eat during the next couple of days. He knew he would have to roast the rest of it quickly before it went bad, but he was happy anyways. He had a pelt. He could tan it and keep the fur, and hopefully it would keep him warm in the winter. He might need another deer to make some pants, or to finish the outfit, but it was a start at least, and he wasn't in danger of going hungry any time soon. He thought back to when he had finished his cabin and he smiled. This was one more reminder that he was a survivor, and he could make it out in the wilderness. He was happy right up until the moment when he got home. He saw it as he approached, and at first he thought he was wrong. When he got closer though, he knew there was no denying what had happened. He dropped what was left of the deer and ran towards his house, sinking to his knees. A tree had fallen in the storm and went right through the roof of the cabin. It was ruined. It would take him at least a week to get rid of the tree. God only knew how long it would take to fix the roof. He didn't have time for that. He wanted to scream and began kicking the ground in his anger. Why? Why had it happened to him? What had he done to deserve something like this? It wasn't fair. The tree could have fallen anywhere in the woods and it decided to fall right through his roof. He threw a fit for a long time before he tired himself out. He sank to the ground with a sigh and he leaned up against the cabin. What were the odds of something like that happening? He had spent days chasing a deer through the woods. He had spent a long, hard days away from home, sleeping on the ground, exposed to the elements, just to be led in circles. And as soon as his luck began to turn, a tree falls through his house? Not just through his house, but right on top of his bed! The thought struck him, and he suddenly became a lot less mad about the damage to his house. He stood up and looked inside the cabin. Sure enough, the tree had fallen on his bed. He became very quiet as he looked at the scene in front of him. He had spent a long time in the woods hunting an animal. It had been hard and unpleasant, and he hadn't really enjoyed it all that much. But if he had stayed at home, things could have been a lot worse. He would be dead if he had stayed home when the storm struck. The thought of it shook him to his core. Until that moment, he had viewed himself as a survivor. He wasn't the best in the business, but the life he had carved out for himself had been his own. He had survived by his own strength, ingenuity, and determination. It was only when he realized where the tree had fallen that he realized he was wrong. He had worked to survive, there was no doubt of that, but he realized that his survival wasn't completely because of himself. He had been lucky to be away from home, and he realized just how fragile his status as a survivor was. Maybe he had been lucky the whole time, or maybe someone or something was looking out for him. Maybe it was God. Maybe it was fate. Maybe it really just was luck, but either way, he realized that there was a lot more to his success than his own skill. With a sigh, he picked up the deer and took it inside the house, stepping around the tree. He began skinning it and butchering it on the table. While he worked, his thoughts kept turning back to the fact that he had narrowly avoided death. He wasn't really sure what to think about what had happened. But as he worked, one thought kept coming back to him over and over. He didn't know if he was talking to anyone in particular, or if anyone was even listening. But he spoke two words softly as he worked. He didn't think anyone was listening, but as he cleaned the deer, he said a quiet thank you. 